My name is Roger Gibson. I write comics. You've probably never heard of me. I don't write Batman or Superman or anything like that. Um, I work for a company called Titan Comics, who are based in London. Um, I write detective comics, mystery, horror, suspense, that kind of thing. You'll sort of recognise that I'm a writer because I'm shabby, a um, little bit tatty, uh, introverted, shy, most, are, most of us are really. Uh, it's that kind of profession. Uh, I'm going to try and tell you a little bit about the mechanics, quite basically, quite broadly, of uh, writing comics, putting together comics. Something uh, more of an overview, because I think you're getting more of it in detail later on. And then a little bit more about my own experience and my own way of, uh, of writing comics. Um, comics these days, they're, uh, they're still a maligned medium. Uh, uh, especially over here where, where any mention of comics tends to elicit mentions of the dandy or the beano. Um, they're not a kid's medium anymore. Kids these days have uh, iPhones, they've got apps, they've got video games, they've got cable TV. Comics these days are largely a grown-up medium. Uh, the comic shop here in York, Travelling Man. Um, I've never seen a kid in there, not in the last couple of years. It's always grown-ups. Uh, there's a marvellous shop in London called Gosh, probably my favourite shop uh, in the country for selling comics. And it looks like a grown-up bookshop. It's an adult, proper grown-up bookshop, set out like that to appeal to, to, to adults. Uh, comics is very much um, a grown-up adult medium. And um, it's not a genre either. We're so used to um, the idea of comics being uh, superhero comics, Batman, Superman, that kind of thing. Uh, it's not. Comics are very wide-ranging. You can do anything with them. You can talk about uh, what you did at the shopping centre. You can talk about um, uh, uh, trips to the zoo. You can talk about magic horses. You can talk about dragons. Anything you like. Comics are so broad and so wide. And I've got no budget at all. There's no budget involved in putting together a comic so they can be big, expansive, epic, or small-scale. Whatever you want to do with them. Um, So as a comic writer, uh, pretty much as with any other form of writing, uh, it's all about uh, uh, getting the basic writing discipline. It's all about um, uh, thinking about imagination, storytelling, pace, structure. All the things that are common with any other kind of writing are all the same uh, pretty much in comic writing. It all sort of applies. The difference with comics is that you're thinking visually. Um, it's all about, it's not so much about just putting the story together, it's not just about writing it down. It's, it's even as the writer thinking visually for the artist, it's, it's, it's maybe sketching down your ideas, it's maybe putting thumbnails together. It's being, it's, if you were making a movie, you're being the director, you're being the cameraman, you're being the screenwriter, you're being the lighting assistant, you're being all those things, uh, all are encompassed in, in the making of comics. So there's a lot of skills that are involved. Um, largely, it's going to be about the storytelling, it's going to be about sort of getting that right. Um, now obviously there's, there's the basics with, 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 with putting together a comic. You, uh, if you're going to be a comic writer you need to know the lingo, you need to know um, about panels, about word balloons, about lettering, about inking, all those things. Now I'm, I'm assuming that most of you sort of know that kind of thing, uh, but there are different ways to use uh, these different varieties. If you're talking about a panel, the panel is the basic box, the basic box around the uh, drawing that you're doing. And now that panel can be any size, any shape, it can be a full page, it can be just little dotted ones, it can be a, a nine panel grid. There are so many different ways to use even just the basic panel shape in a comic. Uh, if you're talking about the lettering, uh, different ways of doing lettering in comics will denote different things. Uh, just putting something in bold will mean it's going to be shouting. Uh, putting something in scary lettering will make it seem scary. Um, so there's adaptability with that. Even just the shape of word balloons or a little tail that comes out of the word balloons. If it's maybe jagged, it might denote that it's a mechanical voice. Uh, if, it's, if it's in bubbles, it'll be a thought balloon. Uh, there, there, there's, there's a whole language, a whole way of approach, a whole different way of approaches with comics that you can sort of get to know just by, by, by reading them. But for me, the most important thing Comic, the thing that's crucial in a comic isn't what's drawn, isn't what's in the panels, it's what's between them. It's what's known in the trade as the gutter. Now the gutter in comics is, if you've got a panel here and a panel here, the gutter is the white space in between. And that's where the magic happens. Because comics are a, are a series of static images. It's one image followed by another one, followed by another one. 
the interactivity with comics, the way that you bring a reader in, is getting them to move along and to fill in the gap. So they feel there's a flow to the story, so that the one panel flows into another into another. Now, there's a lot of different ways of approaching those those um, transitions between the between the panels from uh, one panel to another. There's a writer called Scott McLeod who produced a book called Understanding Comics, which is really good and I encourage you to take a look at it if you're at all interested in creating comics. It's actually a graphic novel. Uh, he wanted to produce a book about how to write comics, about the techniques used, but he did it as a graphic novel. So uh, it's all done in comic form. It's one that's really useful, really useful, really interesting to read. Um, he talked about six transitions, I think it's six, like five or six different transitions between panel to panel that, that are fairly typical within comics that work. There's moment to moment is the first one he came up with. Moment to moment is, let's say you've got a panel with somebody like that, and then a moment to moment will be the next panel, they're like that, and like that, and like that. So you have that slow movement of somebody going from panel to panel, that would be a moment to moment transition. Uh, there's action to action transitions. Now that would be, say, say you've got Batman, you see him punching a villain like that. In the next panel, you see the villain flying backwards. That would be an action to action transition. So instead of, instead of breaking it down to maybe just a leaf slowly falling down, as you might do in the moment to moment transitions, in this one it's one movement and then another one. Um, another type of transition, <coughs> subject to subject. This would be maybe people talking together. This would be, say, it might be one panel of one guy saying, uh, I think you did the murder. And then the next panel, it would be the other guy saying, but I didn't do the murder. That's subject to subject. It's, it's, it's going from, it's, it's within a conversation, going from one person to another. Um, there's scene to scene transitions. <coughs> That's where, I don't know, you might have just finished a scene uh, in the morgue, where maybe there's a dead body laying down. In the next panel, suddenly you're at the beach. To scene to scene transition again. Uh, 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 again, the only this, the, 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 it's the same go to between, but there's a massive change between the scenes. Uh, and the final one would be it was uh, called by Scott McLeod aspect to aspect. That's where let's see a mood setting. Let's say you want to uh, come up with it's a quiet evening at the pub. So you might have a page where there's a, a, a shot of the pub from 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 above. The next one might have just a shot of a beer glass. The next panel might have a shot of somebody just drinking. The next one might have a, a couple of bottles behind the bar. That would be aspect to aspect, where you're building mood, where you're sort of trying to get the, uh, the mood going. So there's, a, so there's a lot of different transitions between those panels that you can use, that you can utilize to uh, come up with um, the way you do your storytelling. It's also, there's also pacing and panel arrangement. So, um, you can influence the way that people people perceive time within comics, the way that people sort of uh, read through it by having larger panels, by having quiet panels, by having um, some maybe a, a long cinemascope panel followed by some small ones. Uh, the way that you just draw those panels, those boxes around 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 the words, they can influence the, the way in which people understand and perceive the, the telling of time within the comic. Um, so, I mean, the various factors that will influence reader space, you've got panel size and shape. So uh, a series of maybe 12 small panels would maybe have something happening quickly. One big panel followed by another big panel might be wanted to show a slower expansive shot. So it, it's, it's a thing that you can do in comics that you can't do in any other medium. You, you can influence the way that people perceive time by the use of panels. Um, silent panels, let's say you've had a page full of a conversation and in the next pe next page, you've suddenly got two, three panels which just show a car driving past, or just a leaf blowing down from the, from the tree, and there's no words, there's no word looms at all. That again will slow the reader down again. They'll, they'll, they'll pause from the from the uh, dialogue they've been looking at, and they'll sort of uh, slow as well. <coughs> um, wordy panels suddenly you've got a whole so, suddenly you've got a big conversation going. Uh, it might be very simple drawings, it might be just headshots, it might be just one guy talking like this, and next guy talking like that, full of word balloons. That'll race you through it, that'll sort of speed you through quicker. So you can really play around with time, you can play around with the way that people perceive time just by the way you use the artwork. Um, <clears throat> now, more generally, uh, these days in comics, professionally, 
Um, editors tend to like a writer to start with a plot synopsis. That's very common in writing. It's the same in novels, it's the same in short stories. Uh, editors like to know the full story from the start to the middle to the end uh, before you begin it. It sometimes feels a little bit limiting. Sometimes when you're drawing a comic or writing a comic, what you want to do is just start at the first panel and not know quite where you're going to go and pile through to the end. Many do that. It's a good, fun exercise in, in, in telling stories. Uh, professionally, it doesn't work that way. They always want to know. So uh, the first stage of writing a professional comic or, or working in the medium would be coming up with a synopsis. Now, that doesn't still necessarily limit you. Let's say you've got a synopsis where there's a young boy who goes to the cinema with his parents. Uh, they're suddenly accosted by a villain outside the cinema. He shoots the parents. The boy's left devastated. He grows up learning all these skills and decides to, decides to fight crime, dresses a bat. Uh, that's your basic Batman origin. But within that, within that plot synopsis, you could give that plot synopsis to an editor. Within that, you can then start to work into it. Um, how did his training go? Did he fall in love? Uh, while he was training, was he, was he maybe tempted away from being Batman by, by, by something else happening? Are there little elements you can bring in? So even a full synopsis doesn't stop your creativity, doesn't stop you being able to sort of expand and, and, and play around with the sort of things you want to do. Um, so uh, usually in comics, this, there isn't a rule that says this is no rule. It's a general thing in writing novels, in writing stories, in writing TV, writing films, writing comics. There's a, three act, there's a basic three-act structure. Your first act, your first, first part of your TV show, the first part of the movie, is establishing your characters, establishing your setting, um, letting you know what the problem is, letting you know what it is we're going to be doing, sort of setting it all up. Uh, the second act is the development, which is known as the rising action, where things start to happen, things start to move, maybe somebody who, who needed to catch a bus misses the bus and then they have to do something else, they have to like, like wave somebody down. Now that's the sort of rising action. The third part would be the falling action or the denouement uh, where you see the resolution to it. Comics tend to work in that same sort of way where you'll establish the character, will be Batman in his Batcave, he'll be, he'll be sort of talking to Robin, they'll be discussing, you know, isn't it terrible that the Joker's just got away from Arkham Asylum? Um, then that would develop into the, into, into, into the Joker robbing a bank somewhere. Through the, the, the three of them all fighting together and the doom one would be catching the Joker, putting him, in, putting him in jail. Now that also works on smaller scale stories. Um, I'm working on a comic at the moment called The Bridesmaid with an American uh, designer. And we're not doing it in typical comic form, we're doing it almost in an illustrative sort of way. And that story is about, a, is about a bridesmaid who's late for a wedding, gets stuck on the motorway, uh, the dress gets ruined, um, she loses her phone, various things happen to her on the way. But that also, even though it's a 100 page graphic novel, is still separated into the basic three act structure. With comics, you can sort of do any kind of story in any kind of, any, any kind of format. It doesn't have to be the fights or the science fiction or the, or the superheroes, there's a huge wide range. Um, now, when I'm putting together a comic, when I'm sort of either doing something on my own, which is rare because my cartooning is terrible, uh, or if I'm working with another artist, which is my preference, uh, usually uh, I would start. I would start sort of plotting out vaguely on a piece of paper. I would maybe rough, do some rough sketch of the scenes, and sort of visualise the sort of thing that I'm wanting, wanting to do. I would work out the number of page that I've got to do it. Now sometimes if you're doing a regular comic for a large company, that's going to be a set number of pages. If you're working on something for yourself, if you're working on something that you want to self-publish or something that you, that, 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 that you want to just create and see if you can find a publisher for it, then whatever length you want to do is fine, but plot it, work it out, so set it up before you begin. Think about um, what sort of scenes are going to be the turning point, what sort of scenes are going to be the most important ones give them more room, emphasize them, give them larger panels, give them full pages, uh, work out where you want to have big conversations, where they would fall within the story. Um, in the first uh, Harker graphic novel that I did with Vincent Dines, Harker's a detective uh, graphic novel, um, Vince and I had the center of the story fall around a, a six-page scene in a pub. Every single page is a full-page full, full page picture 
the backgrounds remained the same, and all we had was the two characters moving within it, various things happening behind them. Because that scene for us, that six page scene, was the core of the story. It was all about the relationship between the detective and his partner. We wanted to emphasize that. So we set it deliberately in the middle, smack in the middle of the book. We gave it loads of room, far more than it, it probably needed. Um, I think those are sort of things that you're when you're approaching any story, whether it's comics, whether it's something else. It's, it's one of the important parts, what are going to work for you. Um, also, think about the kind of mood that you want to establish. Uh, is it going to be a big action story, in which case you're going to have, want to have lots of fast moving action, and lots of lots of cuts, lots of zooming cars and action and stuff? Or is it going to be more quiet and calm? Do you want to just have a character piece where it's just, I don't know, uh, 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 a young person visiting their old granny and finding out stories about what they've done in the past? And, and, and do you want it to be quiet and calm? Maybe you want to do a story that's more musical. Maybe a story about jazz, where the where the panels, where the where the, where the arrangement of the words uh, move and sway as they would with music. There's a um, an artist called P. Craig Russell who's done various opera adaptations, and he, he he does a lot of that where he deliberately tries to make the artwork and the writing reflect the music within the operas. So again, there's a wide range of approaches you can take. Now. When it comes to actually doing the scripting, professionally, generally, there's two, mo there's two ways of doing it, two, two specific ways. The most common one these days is writing a full script. If you're working for Marvel Comics, who do Avengers, who do Hulk, who do Thor, or if you're working for DC Comics, who do Batman and Justice League, things like that, they will want a full script from you. They'll want the synopsis, first of all, the story. They'll then want to... Uh, uh, have a full script. Now, a full script, comics-wise, is very similar to a film screenplay. Every single page, every single panel, you need to describe what's 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 happening, what's there, what's behind them, what's around them, and being very specific. <coughs> being very specific. That will then be given to the artist. The artist will then draw that, um, and off it'll go. Right, the last you'll see of it. The other way, the older way, I suppose, uh, is the way that I prefer. It's known as Marvel style. Um, Marvel style uh, was invented in the 1960s by Stan Lee, uh, who at the time was the main writer and editor of Marvel Comics. He was writing a lot of comics at the time and he had no time to do them, he had no time to write full scripts. So he, he would get his artists into the office one by one when he was doing the stories and he would give them a vague idea, a rough idea of what was going to happen in the next issue. He would say, right, I want Thor to, to battle Hulk and have a big fight in the city and then then, I don't know, the big villain will come down and there'll be stuff, you know what stuff I mean. And then they'll have to go, okay, then, and they'll wander off and they'll draw it. That puts the impetus on the artist to draw 20, 30 pages, whatever, of whatever he thinks that plot should look like. The writer then comes in afterwards and scripts over the top of that artwork. That's very much how I work, not quite as, as skimpily as Stan Lee used to do, but that's very much the sort of way I tend to work. Um, Particularly with, with Vince Danks, the artist who I work most with, but also with other artists, what I like to do is, it's quite informal. Um, generally it's done at the pub, initially. Uh, I'll, I'll come up with a vague plot for whatever the comic is that I'm drawing, that I'm, that I'm writing. In this case, it would be Harcourt, Gravestown, and the two comics that I do with Vince for Time. Um, I would have a rough idea that there would be conversation in a bar somewhere, be somebody getting killed somewhere, there'd be, I don't know, a big, a big horse would appear at some point. There'd be various little pieces that I know need to happen, but I would, I would only have a fairly rough idea of it. In the pub, I sit down with Vince, we'll have a pint or two, and he'll pull out various pieces of paper, and he'll draw what we, what we, call, them, what we call thumbnails. Thumbnails in comics are just little boxes, so he'll, he'll get a couple of pieces of paper, and draw 20 boxes on them. Each box will be one of the pages. In each of those boxes, he'll note down this page, conversation between Harker and Critchley, this page, uh, the bank gets robbed, this page, something. We'll break it down page by page by page. So by the time it comes to the end of that process, he now has a good idea of the kind of things that the characters say to each other, not specific, but the kind of things they're saying to each other, um, the kind of conversations that are taking place, and the general things that need to happen. He then goes away, or whatever artist I'm working with then goes away, draws the entire thing based on the conversation I had in the pub. 
uh, three or four weeks later, I get all that artwork back. Now, the nice thing about that is that I never know quite what I'm going to get back. Uh, I've only given him rough ideas of what I want him to draw. So I get back surprises. He'll have added things. There'll, there'll, there'll be things that I haven't thought of. There'll suddenly be a building in the background that I've never thought of. I'll say, oh, we can do a scene in that building in the next issue. It, it brings that collaboration into it. It gives the artist much more, <coughs> much more say in what happens. Then I get those pages, I get a biro usually, just use a pen and just scribble word balloons all over it. And I'll cross them out, change them, amend them until it all feels about right. Then when that's done, that then becomes a script, that gets lettered and goes off. So that's sort of the Marvel style, that's the way that I tend to prefer to work. Um, it doesn't work for everybody, and the big comic companies don't like it very much. Um, because it gives them a lot less control over what happens at the, at the far end of it. Um, so I would say that if you're working on small projects, if you're doing something for yourself, if you're doing something that's written, drawn entirely solo, there's no need to write a script. You can, you can work that way, you can just do it as you go along. If you're doing something that's maybe self-published or something that's, that's uh, just a, 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 an individual solo project, <coughs> Again, that's a nice way to work it. Break. It allows the artist to collaborate with you to put some, something of himself within, within the project. If, however, you're wanting to draw Batman, or you're wanting to draw, I don't know, whatever, if you wanted to draw Doctor Who, uh, right, to write Doctor Who, or whatever it is, the chances are you're going to have to do a full script. And that brings with it the weight of really understanding storytelling, of really understanding the pacing, of really getting your head into visual way in which comics work. It's harder for a writer to do that um, and you sort of need more skills to do it. And that, that comes down to reading a lot of comics, understanding the way storytelling works, understanding what happens between those panels in those panel transitions, uh, understanding the way in which uh, uh, time works within comics, all those things are things that you have to think about a lot more if you're going to be doing a full script. So it's harder but it's by no means impossible, it's just thinking largely in a filmic sort of way. Uh, largely if you think, I don't know, let's say you're doing a story about going to the shops, buying some sugar and then coming home again. Think about it visually in your head, think about how that would look if that was a little movie, if that was something on the TV, and then break that down into the moments. Emphasise the parts that are particularly important, the part where you grab the sugar, pulls it off or whatever, um, and work it out that way. Uh, my own feeling is that the more you can bring the artist into that, the better, because the artist will have a better idea of how to interpret those things visually. But um, that's sort of the way comics work these days. Um, more generally, uh, from a writing point of view, um, I was always taught when I started uh, a career as a writer to write what I know. Now that doesn't mean you can only write things that, that have happened to you, uh, but it does mean that uh, if you're writing characters, if, you, if you're creating people, if you're, talk, if you're doing conversations, Use things that you've heard, make notes, um, uh, fall back on, 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 on things that have happened to you. Um, the two main characters in the Harker books that Vince and I do uh, is a grumpy old police detective who, who uh, is in his 50s and it's a young, bald police uh, sergeant who hangs out with him. Both of them are me. Both of them are, 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 are very much me. One of them is like an old, grumpy version of me. The other one is a younger, sort of, sort of snazzy version of me who never really existed. But the way they talk, the rhythms of the speech, the way they uh, interact with each other uh, are very much drawn from my own conversations. Sometimes I use real things. There was uh, uh, Vince, my artist, uh, keeps being bothered by owls. I don't know why he keeps getting owls outside his windows making noise. Um, I used that. I used that specific story and dropped into the comic. Um, uh, I was walking home one day and almost set myself on fire when a, a, a match fell on my coat. I've, I've used that too. I've used loads of things that specifically happened to me and given them to other characters. It's quite nice to do that, to take specific things that either you've been told or that have happened to you and to use them in a, in, a, in a fictional way within the work that you do. A lot of writers do that. A lot of writers will put things about themselves within, within fictional works. So generally write what you know. Um, and again, with, with comics, comics is a very dialogue-heavy medium, so listen to the way people talk. I, I listen a lot. I, if I'm on the bus, uh, if I'm in the park, if 
if I'm just sat somewhere where there's a bunch of people. I tend to listen to conversations, listen to things. Uh, I always have my iPad with me so I'll note things down. If somebody says something that I've never heard before, something that's funny or unusual, I'll note it down and then use it at some, la at some later point. So listen to dialogue, listen to the rhythm of speech and, and, and try and use that naturally within comics. Um, don't be afraid to experiment, particularly, I think, is the important thing with comics. There are rules about storytelling, there are rules about the way uh, things are supposed to be done, and some editors are quite strict about them. Uh, that's all very well for big professional comics if you're wanting to work for or work on superheroes, Marvel, DC. If you just want to draw a comic that's about the things that your mum did when she was younger, when she was a ballet dancer, and, and, and the success she made of it, and, and then you don't need to worry about the rules. Draw it in a way that seems appropriate for that particular situation. Uh, let the artwork suggest the story. Let the script uh, pull out the things that are important to you. And throw away the rules sometimes. Throw away the ideas about panel transitions. Throw away the ideas about pacing. And experiment. Have fun with it. Just sort of see what happens when you break all those rules. And, uh, and, and see what happens. And sometimes it really is fun. Just Just getting a piece of paper, drawing the first panel and seeing where it goes. I, I, I've done that many times. Um, and uh, that's probably about it really for, for, for a basic.